Joining us right now is House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Also, House Ways and Means Chairman Kevin Brady. And gentlemen, thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Uh, tax Day. It's a little bit of a victory lap for you all to say this is the last time we're going to be dealing with the old system on to the new. So what do you want to start with? And uh, Chairman, I'll start with you since this was a big heavy lift on your part. Yes. The committee. So this is the worst day of the year for most Americans. And the week leading up to it's probably in the worst week of the year, including in our house. So it really is encouraging today is the last time you'll file under that old complicated tax code going forward it is much simpler people keep more of what they earn our Main Street businesses have a new discount off their taxes to invest and we've redesigned the international code so our companies here can compete and where win anywhere in the world especially here at home so why is the bill still so unpopular with voters at this so point? I think because it's disappeared because since its passage, very little attention has been paid to it. Uh, people still think, a lot of people think they're actually filing under the new tax code today rather than the old one. Uh, and so that's really our responsibility. What I do know is when attention is paid to this new, simpler, fair tax code, popularity rises in a big way. And, and back home, people, I know this, we hear it on Main Street, we hear it from families. I heard it in Home Depot the other day with a worker, part-time worker, who just said thank you at $184 more each paycheck means the world to me and my family. Uh, I think that's important. Leader, do you think that recognition from the voters comes before Election Day? Because that's the big question. If people are waiting until next April when they really see these things, it's a little too late for the elections that are taking place this November. I don't think it'll be too late because if you watch, the tax bill has gotten more popular. You got five million people who got bonuses. You've got how many more people that have longer maternity leave just because of this tax bill. Mm -hmm. You look at even your electrical bills in 39 states have come down because of the tax bill. I mean, as people learn more about this, and how many people got a raise in their own paycheck because the withholding changed in this process. It's explaining that to them and it continues to grow and get more popular. But what's, what people really look at, look at where unemployment is, look at where job creation, and then look at all these companies that brought the money back to America to invest. So. As economic growth continues to go, I think come November, and then April will even be greater. I know uh, the chairman, this week, just today, we're passing 13 more tax bills on the floor that are changing the form of the IRS and identity theft. Very important things that Americans care about. We continue to work. I think at the end of the day, you'll see this very popular. We've talked a little bit about that legislation earlier today, and that is bipartisan legis legislation, correct? It's, 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 the nobody likes the tax The majority of man. bills we pass are bipartisan. You know, there are more than 200 bills sitting in the Senate that have a 100% vote of Republicans and Democrats out of this House. It's, I know we focus on all those things that divide us, but this is one thing that was different. Remember, Nancy Pelosi said this was Armageddon, that it was crumbs when people got a bonus. There, there is a philosophical difference between the two of us, and that's what the fear is why you don't want to lose the House. We just were speaking with House Speaker Ryan and asked him about his endorsement of you. He's stepping down and has said that he would like to see you take his job. Um, we've also read in the press that maybe your relationship is frayed because he's not stepping down immediately. I, I don't know where they got that article. Yeah. Paul and I, um, when we first came to Congress, he's been one of my best friends. I don't know if you remember back when we were in the minority, Paul and I and another Eric Cantor Eric created Kander. Young Guns, yeah. one of the integral part of helping us win the majority. We've been a partner all the way through this. Um, I'm humbled that Paul would say that, but what's most important, Kevin will tell you and every member of this conference, we have to make sure a Republican could become speaker in the next Congress. So we have a lot of work to do. History goes against us, but remember, there's two times in history that all changed, and I believe that'll be the case this time as well. The polls right now um, have come in a little closer on just a generic ba ballot, I think it's three to four points, that the Democrats are leading you by. Why, why does that get you to the point that history is different this time? Because if the polls say it's Democrats for three points, we will keep the majority. Yeah, that's, what just, that's exactly what the Paul said. Yeah. Ryan If it's said. plus six or less, Republicans will keep the majority. It's April. Yeah, it is April. You just pass this thing. I it's mean, it, April. It, it, I think you had too much success right out of the gate when that first week. Uh, what and has to happen so now is mo money goes into the, 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 the pockets of, of normal people that, that spend more, and that causes companies to see the demand, which then cause people are complaining companies aren't moving quick enough to, oh. to, to invest in capital and, and corporate loans, et cetera. They don't do it until they see the demand, and the, it's a chicken-egg thing. We're yeah, not done with April. everything yet, too. Yeah, it isn't. And really, uh, you know, 
as remarkable as the early signs have been on growth and new investment and jobs coming back, the best is yet to come because this was really redesigned to leapfrog America to the lead pack as one of the best places on the planet for that next new Money plant, back new too, facility. Yeah. yeah, that takes some time. So I think uh, the best is yet to come. And today, besides this being the last time we have to file, look at what's happening. So we are proposing the first um, reform of the IRS in 20 years. Yeah. So we redesign, refocus, and really rein in the IRS abuses. And we do it in a good, smart way that's bipartisan. Look, people want, we have a new tax code. What a perfect time to have a new tax collector and redesign completely the way that agency works. This is important to the American people. Uh, customer service is certainly an area people are concerned about. Cybersecurity is another. How, how do you beef up the cybersecurity issues? Because there have some, been so many people who have had their tax identification stolen. Yeah, so that's part of the redesign. So we require the IRS to bring us back a new restructuring the whole agency within a year and a half. We redesign their whole IT system so that they can protect our personal, private taxpayer information better. And then we really create a truly independent appeals process that puts taxpayers on the same level as the IRS mm -hmm. in these disputes so they can be uh, resolved more affordably and more quickly. And that's just one part of some major changes to the IRS. Leader McCarthy, what, what worries you if the economy is doing so well right now, if things are going along as planned? What, what concerns you that could change that picture between now and November? I think the economy is going to continue to grow, especially what we're doing. I mean, you, you look around the world, the people investing in America, the money coming back. I get worried about one, the divide in this country, but more so what the world looks like. I mean, the movements of different things happening. But I give this president a lot of credit. He's got North Korea back at the table. He's got a new trade agreement in South Korea. We're very close to finalizing a modernization of NAFTA. Um, this is a fundamental difference. When you saw action that took place in Syria, which was correct, it wasn't America alone. It was the UK and France as well. So I think we're turning the tide on what this world looks like and the dangers that was out there. And I think that's the strength and the investment that we just made in the military. One of the saddest parts I have seen, more of our men and women have died in training than in combat. That's a sign that our military was cut too far. And we just made an investment to change that direction because this world did not get safer by 20% in the last little bit. So we're making great strides. But there's things people aren't even looking at of things we did. Do you realize last week we signed into law something that we have been working on more than eight years, human trafficking? More than 100,000 kids are human trafficked, and 70% of that is online. We just shut down Backpage by the legislation we were able to pass. 87% of all that is now shut down. So there are not only just economics, but the safety in your house mm -hmm. and for your children, we're making great strides. That's why I think come November, when people see the full aspect of what changed in just a new election, I think it'll be a different it'll outcome be, than what people are predicting. I, mean, I take pride that you can turn on this, this network and, and hear something totally different than what you're hearing right now on the other networks. But you know what, I'm, uh, what they're talking about uh, right now. And it's a sticky thing to get into. And you're very close to the president. You're one of his favorites. Um, I would say half the country, uh, their greatest hope is happening in the Southern District of New York. That's their greatest hope, what's happening with Michael Cohen. And the other half, their greatest fear is what's, what's happening there. You know, we're, we're, we're a rule of law, a country that believes in that. It was, it was very disturbing to me when I watched Comey. He, he thought he was above the law. His wife believes she's out marching and the children. I mean, they're putting politics before people. And I trust the American people. Uh, I, wa I was just at dinner the other night with the president, you would not know any of this other stuff is going on. He was focused on Syria. He was focused on the economy. He was focused on right to try, that we changed the fundamental, that people still had an opportunity to try a new drug, the end part of their life, to save their life. This man works 24 hours a day in the process. He's not letting that get under his skin. You know, in 1998, we saw the same scenario on a couple different things um, where the Democrats thought they were going to lose seats. You had great economic growth. The president at that time was under impeachment and the Democrats picked up five seats. I think we just focus on our job. You watch what Kevin and Ways and Means are going to do more. We got more economic well, growth you, to go. You could be gratified by, by what happened back then because he stayed in office and he, he you know, finished his term and everything else. But, it, but then you could also look at that, that 
started with white water and ended up with a blue dress, and, and it went totally a, a, a field, you know, far field from, from where it started. Some people might say that who knows what's in this lawyer's files. What if it goes back to the mid-2000s and there's some kind of illegality? Will, will the country, when you start looking for collusion with Russia and you end up with some real estate deal that wasn't, you know, Look, it wasn't legal? The, is that an impeachable offense? If the question was about collusion, I think that's been put to rest. I've watched how many different studies from the own house. You look what the Does Senate it even matter from Mueller that it's been put to rest? He seems to be, you know, he's, go, you know, that, that just was the starting point. Now it's so broad. I'm well, not sure what it is now. Well, you, I think people should look at the IG report. You know, it's just partial. I mean, think about it. The number one and number two of the FBI, they were let go. I mean, they were fired by their own people. They were recommended not by a political basis, but their own people looked at the situation and said these people need to be removed, and they were. I think the American people are smarter than that when they see through it. All this movement of this whole idea of this Russian report was paid for by the Democrats. We need to move beyond that, get this economy moving, and keep the rule of law, and I think we'll be in a much stronger place. It was up by place. Republicans who were running against Trump, though. It was the, Demo the opposition report. I mean, that was Not it. to the point of where they went. When you look at the more millions of dollars that they spent from the Clintons and others. Chairman Brady's like, I don't even know. This is no, not about, no. You're, it's not about marginal <laughs> rates and repatriation. What, no, I have no interest in. As that. I listen to all this, I go, everyone watch that stuff is going to get a tax cut. You know, get, I know. I saw you. You were like your yeah. eyes just the were like, jobs yeah, are coming I back. have no so interest in America's this. America's back. Yeah. Right. What do you do next with the tax cuts? Yeah. You hear about this plan too. What? Where does that stand? What happens? Yeah. Is it before or after the election? You know what that really is. Phase two is about changing the culture in Washington, where we do reform every 30 years. And in between, we just do special interest breaks. It's really about, like our local businesses, we know our competitors aren't standing still. So it's really about waking up every year as a Congress asking, how can we be more competitive as a country? How can we be more innovative? How can we be more family friendly through the tax code? So phase two is really about this year, looking at how do we continue to be to improve, just like our businesses do every day, just like our competitors around the world will be looking to get advantage over us. We're not going to let that happen. The reality, again. though, is when you have all of your members who are facing re-election, you're going to be facing a tougher challenge to get votes on the table before November. Sure, but I tell you what, most people um, here in the House, and I think the Senate as well, want to continue to grow the economy in a big way. They want to continue to make the tax code more family friendly and grow. And so, yeah, I think there's still ways we can improve the, the tax code. How, how vulnerable is your new tax bill, your new tax code, if the Democrats take back the House? Well, because there's no heard... doubt. Um, they want to go back to bad old days. Higher tax rates on families and businesses and a, and a tax code that keeps sending U.S. jobs overseas. So I think November, it is April. We don't vote in April. We vote in November. And I think there where the American people get a clear choice. Do, do they want to go back to bad old days? of the old tax code where Washington takes more of what you earn? Do they want this healthy economy in a growing country where they keep more? I think that's going to be the key question. That's why we should move tax day to November 1st so people could have a decision at the same time in the same week of what they think their government is doing and why it's moving forward. That I hadn't thought of. Is that <laughs> an actual idea? Yes, it's actually... I've got a whole package of bills that are going to be coming out. I think there's an opportunity. And you ask about the Democrats. The Democrats <clears throat> proposed to raise your taxes, repeal the tax cut. They don't think people should keep more of what they earn. And then they also pass a budget that not only raises taxes, but adds to the deficit by another $3 trillion. I mean, if you look at what they have planned, I mean, think about what Nancy Pelosi said. She held every single Democrat to say no to this tax bill. So they don't, the five million don't get a bonus. Your electrical bills aren't going down. You know, your maternity leave is not being extended. Your minimum wage is not going up. That's what they believe. I think this is, this is a healthy discussion we could have and a healthy debate. And at the end of the day, we're going to win it. The we're work that Kevin Brady's from, done. From uh, Nancy Pelosi's office. Is right this there, a, yeah. She's right here. Is this a conversation that you all are having back and forth? Is there any idea that there's going to be bipartisan work on these things? I know you mentioned 200 bills, but the, I'm assuming that those are not the front and center bills that get all this attention. Let Kevin talk about what he has on the floor today in bipartisan. Yeah, so really several years of work, great work by uh, John Lewis. Of, uh, of Georgia. 
Lynn the Jenkins IRS of bill. Kansas, yeah. IRS redesign, refocus, reforms there. It's really good work. These are solid reforms going forward. We did it the right way, I think, working together in a big way. So, yeah, I think there is a lot of common ground here. There's a lot of times that it can be bipartisan, but the leader of the Democratic Party, the minority leader, she puts a memo out, don't even work on the farm bill together. And you look at where unemployment is today, we're trying to keep, get people off poverty into work. She's opposed to even talking about it. She, she tells her members they can't discuss it. In every aspect that we've gone through this year, they've tried to hold to have things not happen. Then go across the street to the Senate when you have a new administration and you have 1,200 people that have to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could take the last five presidents and they've doubled the number, they filibustered these people. If you continue down this pace, it'll take 11 years before these confirmations can go through. So when the question comes back and you think on what worries you in this country, the divide from another side that a minority tries to stop. We just went through and had to do an omnibus, even though we passed all 12 appropriation bills on this side, and it wasn't because the Republicans on the Senate didn't want to do it. Those Democrats stopped them from even debating the bill. Not about voting against the bill, but even debating the bill. You That's know, the challenge that frustrates Chris Van Hollen, and I asked Ryan to stay. He left. Can you? I, I've got to interview Chris Van Hollen coming up. Can you hang out? I, I mean, he's going to say I the love opposite the of everything you just said. What, what should I say to him? Chris How, Van Hollen is the head of the Democratic um, Senate campaign committee. You want us? Can you stay? I've we got have a, conference. I'm, oh, that's I'm what Ryan saying. said, conferences. Okay, that's we what we are a team I'll, I'll do and a strong back. team, and we've got work to do. All right, no, we're kidding. But Leader McCarthy, Chairman to Brady, from Chris Van want to thank both of you for your time today. We really do appreciate it, and we great appreciate you having hosting us here, too. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, thank great. you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.